Hello everyone, Reese from RJC Models here, and this is part four of the 1/9th Atelieri Manx Norton. Um, so, obviously, so a quick recap. What I've actually done is, while I was off camera, um, I went and fitted the oil tank and piped all the, the, the oil tank up and that sort of thing, just there like that, um, and got it all into position, got it all sorted like that. Um, I also um, painted the rear seat. Um, just like that. There we go. That's, that's just that's literally just drying now. Um, so that'll be in this in this part two. Um, and what I'm going to show is, is I'm going to do a bit of a bit of weathering on this one, a bit of dry brushing, maybe. Um, I may put a bit of a wash over it instead, because these seats were actually leather with a red a red pinstripe. So I'll do the red pinstripe off camera. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the red stripe pinstripe in. Cool. So you you, you guys can see it too. Um, so yeah, I put the red pinstripe around the, the seat. Um, and also, what I have done is I've done one side of the the tank with the uh, decal on there. So what I'll do is I'll show you decaling the other side. So what I'll do is I'll move the camera, place it, point it down to the bench, and we'll go and do some modelling. Okay. So what I've got here, um, just to the, the the right of the screen here, I've got um, a, uh, just a, 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 a container of warm water. Um, Let's get that out of the way. And what I was doing there is I'll show you how we or how I do my decalin, just like that. Oops. So what I'll do is I'll get a, a brand new Swan Morton blade, so it's nice and sharp. Um, I'll cut near what I want the decal I want. So I won't cut around it. I'll just cut near it like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take it off of there. Oops. It's not quite gone through. This this backing paper is quite thick. I mean, these these decals are absolutely are really really nice. They're absolutely lovely, but the backing paper is a little bit thick. Um, that's why I'm using the warm water. The warm water just um, soaks it up a little bit. Um, it soaks into the water a bit quicker. Uh, it soaks into the backing paper a bit quicker. I, I've found, um, and it just it makes things a little bit easier. So I've got a set of forceps here. And all I want to do is I'm just going to stick the decal in the forceps um, and then what I'm going to do is upside down because if you put it in that way it will curl but if you put it this way it seems to the way that the the decal is on it seems to be okay so what I'm going to do upside upside down I'm just going to plunge the the decal in like that leave it in a little while a little minute uh, let's do it on camera so you can see so I'm just going to plunge it in just so you can see that till you can see the decal on the other side then I'm going to turn it over as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of curling, but not a lot as what you usually would. So I'm just going to leave that in there a minute. Whoops. Um, just till it starts to move. What I'd usually do is while I'm while I'm decaling, I, what I'd usually do it is um, so I put this to one side, and then I'd work on something different. But obviously, for the purpose of this video, I'll, I'll wait and we'll wait until that's ready to go. So it, it doesn't take too long with these with the the decals. Um, so the only problem that, that is fine with these ones is that the paper is a little bit thick so you do need to leave it in there a little bit longer than you probably normally would um, so I'm just leaving that in there just to, to soak up um, just so you, you just want it so it moves a little bit just like that there you go so it's just starting to go off there I don't know if you guys can see that well but so it's just starting to there we go it's actually fully gone now so that's what now that's all nice and movable what I'll do is I take my my piece that I'm going to do like that and then what I do is actually I, I, I scrape, well I don't scrape, I, I get put the backing paper on the model and then just run it across just so you've got a little bit of water on there. Um, and then I want to do is I'll take the decal off onto the model, so obviously there's still quite a lot of water on there. Take it off of there like that, slide it nice and gently. You don't want to rip it out too quick because what, I, what you'll find is if you pull it out too fast you'll actually rip, you can, you've got um, more, you've got, you've got more of a chance of actually tearing the decal, like this, the actual decal part here. Um, so that's obviously now it's all on there like that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just position it where I want it. I mean, that's pretty spot on actually. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll take a bit of kitchen towel, blue roll, whatever you've got to hand. And then I'll just literally lightly, not putting much pressure on it at all, I'll literally lightly press down onto the, Part. Oops, making not sure not to do what I've just done, and let's move it out of the way. But I don't mind doing that because it shows you, it got shows you guys what to do. Um, I and mean, what I normally do as well is another good thing is to roll it into a little thing, 
a little bit like that, and then just gently, I'll just hold the, gently, very, very gently, hold the back of the, the decal and just very, very gently, no pressure at all. I've got no pressure on there, and I just push very, very gently. Just so it just it takes the, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just a few creases in the bottom. And what you do is, doing it this way, you just, you just pulling the creases out, getting the air bubbles out of the underneath the decal, and just making it nice and smooth. Because ideally, these these decals are actually very very nice, and I don't think that they're going to need it. Usually, what I would do is put a coat, a clear coat over this, to seal it in. But I don't actually think it's going to need it because it actually comes out very very nice over the alkalad paint that I've used to paint the tank with. So yeah, unless you're just stroking the bubbles out or just smoothing the bubbles out getting all of the creases out of the decal there and then so I'll give it a nice a bit more pressure just that once you once you've got your your, your decal where you want it you, you then put a bit more pressure on just to get the last of the air bubbles out and then there we go that will sit quite nicely like that and now you've got both sides of the tank done the petrol tank done. So this is now ready to be put on the bike. Uh, we're actually going to scratch build a, scrap, a strap, tank strap for this one. So that's now ready for the tank strap to be built and to be put on the bike. Right. So the next part I've, I've actually gone ahead and done off the screen again as well is I've painted the the seat. This is just the rear seat, so it's still a bit tacky at the moment. I'm just waiting for it to dry. Um, I might actually just get a bit, get a hair dryer and just warm it up just just dry it with a hairdryer just to speed up the processes but what I'm actually do is around the seat edges um, I don't know if you guys can see that very well but just there is a little like sort of dotted line and what that is is the seam of the seat and what that is is actually it's it's a red color it's, it's painted red well it's, it's red cotton that's used to to stitch the leather together um, and I'm actually gonna mask this out once this is dry I'm gonna mask it out and then come along and actually paint that red stripe in okay so I'm gonna let's just let this dry and then we'll be back with the next part okay right so I tried to I tried to do the pinstripe on the on the seat watch because now it's dry um, and it was a little bit th fiddly so I think I'm just gonna leave it for now um, obviously there's a little bit on there but it's okay it just looks a bit authentic makes it look a bit more used so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the seat on onto the bike um, <clears throat> let's get this out of the way um, I'm going to put the seat onto the bike now um, and the rear mud guard, so we'll go from there. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So, basically, all I'm going to do oops, is I've got your seat, it calls for you to put the seat on first, like this, and it's got two little two little lug holes on there, and then two little lugs on here, and you just pop it in, and away you go. Um, so, I'm just going to pop that, dry fit that on just to make sure it fits. And then I'm going to come along with some glue and glue the underside. So get it all on nice and straight, nice and flush. Push it down like that. There we go. It's a bit of a tight fit, but it's not a problem. So what I'll do now is I'll go inside there and run some, run some glue in there and in there just to get it to stick. Mm -mm -mm. So let's pop some glue around oops, pop some glue around the nubs in there. And I'm gonna pop a bit onto there. Oops, I'm gonna like that. oops. Don't get it on the outside of your model. <laughs> and what we're also gonna do is gonna put some round oops, there we go, round the the front of the seat just here where it goes around the frame. Just to, just so you got a bit of an extra hold on there. So pop some of that around there. A bit around there like that. So that's the beauty of the extra fin, because you can pop it in and it just it'll it'll find its own way around the seat and where it wants to be. So I'll make sure that's all nice on there like that. Which it is, it's all nice and flush. There we go. So there's the seat on. It's really actually coming to get coming together really well. Um, so now I'm gonna put the rear mud guard on. Um, I actually it's by by accident there's uh, supposed to be a little tab on the oil the rear of the oil tank there um, and I actually when I was painting I actually 
I caught, I caught it and it fell off, but it's not a problem because we can just pop this onto there a little bit like that. So pop that on there like that, and I'm just gonna pop a bit of extra fin into there like that. And then I'm just gonna pop a bit on the rear tank, which is a bit awkward to get into, but it's not a problem. So now I'm just going to put that aside to let it dry. Oops. Get some more glue in there. Let that dry like that. Okay. So I've just popped some glue into the into there. I popped a bit of glue onto the, the rear mud guard under the seat, and there we have the rear mud guard is now on. Um, so the next part of the instructions actually calls for the rear wheel and the rear spring arm and chain that sort of stuff to go on now. So I've just got I've got one of the rear wheel just down here because what I did was I'm um, just experimenting a little bit with um, washes that sort of things just to see how well it will bring the, the, the tyre out. Obviously you, the tyres beforehand look a bit like this so they're a bit a bit they're very very good don't get me wrong they're very nice and you can see all the details in there in the, the tyres but I just wanted to give it a little bit more just a little bit of an edge and I, I think what I might do is put it all together and then just run and wash around it once it's all on there um, so um, what we need to do is just grab our box of sprues just down here and we need to grab the so this is the primary drive from so this should be going from the engine to the gearbox so what we need to do now is find D, which I believe is just down here. Here we go. Here's our sprues. I'm just going to find D, which I believe is this one just here. Is that D? Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's D. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just this is the uh, primary drive cover. So I'm just going to pop that off of there. A little bit of that, and then I'm just going to pop that off of there like that. Oops. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little bit of clean up because we've got a little bit of. There we go. So I've got a bit of clean up to do. So I'm just get rid of that. And I get rid of that. And then what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my knife. Actually, I'm going to get a sander because that's probably a bit easier. Can I get a sander like this? I'm just going to take that down in there, like that, something like that, just to make it all nice and flush. Just taking it down, just so we're just getting those nubs off of there like that. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually while I'm going up and down with the the sanding, I'm actually moving it around as well as you can see there. That's literally just to stopped the piece going out of shape because that's got quite a nice shape on it. I think we want to we want to keep that shape on there. So what you do it what I'm what I'm doing is I'm going up and down with the, the stick and then I'm also following the contour of the part as well. So I'll take the nub down a lot just down to the part and then I'll follow the contour of the part a bit like that. It's always important to, to remember to keep, because obviously as you can see there, you'll, you'll get like bits of dust. It's always good to keep that dust out of the way, just so you can see your part and that sort of thing. And we'll do the same on the top there. The good thing with the top part is obviously it's already flat, so we can just go straight on there. And that's, the, that's that nice and cleaned up. Right, um, I'm just going to see what colour it calls for if it needs to be coloured because what I'll do is I'll stick it all together and I'll put brush paint around it. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to get the primary chain which is this one just here and pop that off there. We'll just drop that off there like that and then like that. And <clears throat> not really a whole lot of clean up so I'll just take the knife and take the edges off. Just a bit like that, and then the primary chain goes on to there, like that. 
And what I, what I actually did was when I, when I painted this chain, when I painted this chain, um, I painted this one as well, so it was all ready to go on. So it's a bit tight, this one. But we shall get in there. What I might do is put that one on first. So I put the front, the front bit of the primary chain on first, so the sprocket that goes onto the engine. A little bit like that, and then line it up all nicely so it fits on there. And then I'm just gonna there we go. Oops, give it a bit of pressure just so it goes on. So I'm gonna go a bit like that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run some glue on the inside in there. Like that. Just touch and flow. Pop it on there, touch it, let it flow around, or let that do its magic. And then, also because the primary chain is actually uncovered, what I'm actually going to do is glue it from the inside. A bit like that. Because this will now actually be covered in a second. So what I'm going to do is now that's on there, um, I'm going to pop that on. This is the primary chain cover. So this is the bit that stops you from getting hurt. I'm going to pop that on. To there, a bit like that, and I'll put that onto there like that. Just dry fit it, make sure it fits nice, which it does. This is, I say, this is a superb kit, so that all fills. Excuse me. It all fits nice. You have got no fit issues. Well, you got a few, a few little fit issues, but it's nothing that a bit of persistence wouldn't, as you can see here, wouldn't go amiss. So that goes on there like that. Push it nice and tight into there, there we go. And then I'll pop that onto that bit there. And there we have our primary chain cover. And then we've got, a, uh, again, another cover which is just here. Which would then sit over the top of that. So it's just here, the primary chain cover. And what we'll do is we'll pop that on the, over the top of there. So again, we'll get our Swan Morton blade. And then just look the ends off. What I'm actually doing there as well, when I've got a part that's that shaped, what I'm actually going with the, the shape of the part, so it goes dump and then dump and it takes the, it keeps the shape of the part but it takes the, the knob off like that and like that so you get a nice bit of clean up and this just pushes over the primary chain a little bit like that so that's on there nice that's the primary chain and that sort of stuff that the chain covers and that sort of thing on there like that um, the next thing it calls to do is to start building this rear suspension up and this rear swing arm that sort of thing so what I'll do is I might as well do that while I'm here um, so I'm just gonna grab our screws um, so this is the, uh, again, this is just your uh, your sprue, which your mud guards and that sort of thing come on. And the front, this is the front, um, it's the number will go on this bit. That'd be quite cool. So I'm going to spray it up with some, like to cut it off, cut it all down, spray it up all nice, and then get a gloss coat over it just to make it look good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is get part A10. Oops, it's now just... Notice that I've flobbed some paint onto there, but I'll clean that up in a little while. So, um, this is D. Uh, that's B. So, A10 must be down here. Is it down here? It's not down here. Uh, The chrome parts are A, aren't they? Yeah. They are. So, uh, so bear me a minute, guys. Yeah, A10. There we go. So A10. This is the exhaust. So we've got some stuff here for some sprue glue, some smooth smooth glue. That's all. Some smooth filler. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, right. So A10. This is. 
No, it's just there. No. Uh, oh, hang on, 106, which is this part just here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And get rid of that. So again, this is quite nicely chrome. It's not overly chrome. Oh, I keep doing that. Um, so it's, over, over, no, it's not overly chromed, but it's enough to, for what we want. So again, I'll take the knobs off. And also, the good thing with this is that it's it helps with the weathering um, when I come to do it later on. So what I'll do is I'll actually weather this all up um, with the same weathering that I use on there. Um, right, so we now need the 10. Oh, first, let's, let's do this bit first. So, we want the C's. Okay, this one's, this one's, these ones are just here. Yep, these are the parts just here. And then, um, we want C5, 6, and 7. So, 5, 6, and 7. Pop that for there. Pop that for there. Actually, I'm going to use cutters for this because of the. And what we've got, we've got some bent, some bendy cutters, so they bend around the corner. So what I'm going to do is actually just pop right off of there, like that. So you've got seven, five, six, or six, five, seven. And number five is the first one, so we'll cut that off of there. A little bit like that, a little bit like that, and then we'll go back and use the Sir Morton just to get rid of those nubs in there. There's a few nubs, so we we'll just get rid of those like that. Again, keeping it nice and close to the part, but not too close that you could wreck the part. So, what we're going to do is now just going to sand this up. Just to get rid of those nasty nubs that no one really likes. Okay, we'll do the same with this one. Right. This is all very exciting stuff, eh? Watching me sand some nubs. But it's all worth it in the end. All worth it in the end. It's very. This has been a very, very good kit. I'm, I must admit, I have enjoyed building this kit. Um, okay, so that goes on to there, like that, and it just layers up like that. So it'll all sit nicely on there like that. So this is would be uh, your disc brake. Obviously, your little nubs are on this bit, so I'm gonna. Take off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come away, take the nubs off, um, and then come back to you guys in a minute. Okay. Right, so what I've got there now is I actually went away and off camera I did um, I did fit the rear wheel and check the uh, rear chain sprocket, that sort of stuff, and this um, sort of swing on bit there, the silver bit. Um, <clears throat> so that's where I'm at with that. The next stage with this bit would be to make the rear suspension. Um, and the good thing about this kit is you actually get... You actually get, excuse me, you actually get the rear suspension in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do one side. Then I'll go away and um, I shall do the other side because that's a bit a bit tedious. So, so I'll come back to doing this bit. So what we need is our springs that we put away earlier, which are these ones just here. So you actually get the proper springs with this one. Um, right, we need... All be so we don't need any of that. No, actually, yes, we do. We need B150. So it's this one just there. Do, 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 do. Picking up the wrong bits and pieces. <laughs> right, so this is your spring housing. So the spring will actually go inside there. Right, sorry, no, it's sit on top of there, I think. Oh, sorry, it will go inside the spring. So this is the shock absorber that will go inside the spring now. Um, right, okay. 
just do a bit of clean up on that. And what I'll do is I'll put these edges so you can't see them. There we go. So I'll put them on the top so I'll do it like that. Right, we need B, 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 B. Uh, A, D. No, that's just fine. B. B. I think B is this one actually. Is B this one? B is this one. So we want B eight. I'm just going to clip that off there with these. these off like that so I'm going to do it on camera so you can see what I'm doing. Just come forward a bit more. There we go. Right so yeah this is the making of the rear shock absorber which looks quite straightforward. So we've got the two parts there so this this part will go inside there like a say like a sort of shock absorber like that and you have the spring in the middle. Right, 12 mil let me just have a look for the 12 mil spring. This kit has actually been it's come together really well. I've had a few fiddly parts, but that's not a problem because we can get around that. That's not a problem at all. Um, so the shorter ones. But other than that, this kit has come together really, really well. I've really enjoyed building this, and I can't wait to get the rider sorted for it because that would look really cool. Um, I'm actually going to do it going around a corner. Um, let me just pop that in there. So you pop your spring inside there like that. And then that bit sits inside there. So you've got your actual spring movement like that. You guys can see there, it actually got a, a nice spring movement. And then what I'm going to do now is go back to my B sprue. Find the top half, the top mounter. Like the top mount for the the sprue there, there we go, so it's just there, oops, I didn't want to come off there then, there we go, so I'll pop that in there, like that, and then, right, okay, so shorter and down, I don't know how that's supposed to do that, okay, we're supposed to do it like that, then. okay, there we go, so just pop that in there. I'm going to pop a bit of glue on that bit just to glue it in a little bit like that. And then I'm going to get B111, B111, which is the bottom mount of the spring. So I'm just going to clip that off of there and then. Clip that off the bottom bit there, there we go. And then, because we've got the little bit of uh, chrome on the bottom there, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take that off there a minute, just with a sanding stick. Um, I'm just what I'm doing is I'm just taking enough chrome off the bottom just so I can glue the uh, glue this bit on the bottom there like that. There we go. So that goes in there nicely. A nice bit of bounce to it, and then all it does is this bit goes from underneath the seat, so just underneath here. Oops, there we go, just underneath there to this first notch there. So it will sit there, that way up, like that, on there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go away to the other side and then I'll come back when that's done. Okay. Okay, so I went away and did the both sides of the rear shock absorbers. 
I also did the brake line, or the, the brake um, pipe there. Well, it's not a pipe, it's a, a line. So the brake rod and the foot pegs. And the same this side, I did the exhaust pipe and the uh, the gear lever. Uh, yeah, the gear lever and that sort of thing on this side. I um, also went ahead and built the little stand, just because it's getting to the point now where this is getting quite um, a pain to handle, um, to put down or lay down or whatever. So I thought I'd build the stand just so I could put it to one side and then if I need to I can just pop it on its, oops, he says as he drops it off, <laughs> pop it on the stand and it will sit there and I can work on the front end that way. Um, but yeah, she's coming together really nicely. Um, in the next part, um, I shall be building the front forks and that sort of thing. Um, so I'll show you how to do one side and then I'll go off and do the rest. Um, I might do a little bit off camera just because it's a little bit tedious. But yeah, that's the uh, the front forks for the next the next part so that's where she's at now um i hope you enjoyed this video like comment subscribe um all that sort of stuff share links to our facebook page instagram that sort of stuff will also be in the description below so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one thank you bye